If you are early in the morning and watch the sunrise on the lake, even if none's in your bucket, the beer scenery will fill the space. When the barber goes down with tugging, this thrill compares to nothing. Yeah, this their life for loving, cause you're dealing with some fishermen. How we doing, ladies and gentlemen? Professor Slab here, you just tuned into another episode of Slab Life Fishing. Ladies and gentlemen, today is brine day. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a delicious brine for your smoked mullet or your smoked fish. I've even used the same brine on holiday turkeys, chickens, things of that nature, and it works absolutely amazing. It gives you some good flavor all the way down to the bone. You understand what I'm saying? Now, what is a brine, ladies and gentlemen? A brine is nothing more than a liquid seasoning bath. Okay, there's no other way I can pretty much put it, ladies and gentlemen. It's pretty. It's just a, 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 a liquid that you sit your meat in that gets the seasonings all the way down to the bone. So when you're ready to cook your meat or prepare it for whatever day you're going to be cooking it for, whether it's Sunday dinner or a holiday, it would have flavor all the way down and it would taste absolutely delicious, okay? And sometimes, now, there's either one or two things you can use a brine for. The main thing would be seasoning, of course. The second thing would be color. Color on the meat when you're getting ready to cook it. Your brine can do those two things for you, ladies and gentlemen. Those two things they can do for you. You can actually flavor your meat real good, and it can add a beautiful color when you're getting ready to bake it, smoke it, fry it, whatever you're going to do with it, okay? Now, what's the start of a perfect blah brine? The start of a perfect brine would be simply salt, ladies and gentlemen. Salt would be your favorite and most best friend when it comes down to making a brine, okay? Now, right here what we have, ladies and gentlemen, is a nice pot right here and I got it full with some water. As you guys can see, ain't nothing but water in there, ladies and gentlemen, right now. Now, let's get this brine started. Now, like I just told you guys, in the beginning of every good brine would be salt. So we're gonna start with our dry seasonings first, ladies and gentlemen. Now, <clears throat> I love garlic salt. You guys can put in your brine whatever you feel in your heart. Whatever you feel like will taste good on your meat, put it in your brine. Google it, ladies and gentlemen. You can Google anything these days. Google brine for fish. And it'll give you a million different ways you can make a brine for smoking your fish. Okay? Just Google it, ladies and gentlemen. YouTube it. Come to Slab Like Fish and we'll show you however you want to do it, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, right here, what I got is a little bit of garlic salt. Now... You guys notice I got a shaker side and I got a spoon side for large quantities. I'm going to open up that spoon side, ladies and gentlemen, because we seasoned a big bowl of water here. Pot of water, excuse my French. I'm going to put a generous amount of garlic salt in that water. I'm going to take my spoon, wish it around a little bit, make sure that them flavors getting all the way in there. Now, you could just stop right there, ladies and gentlemen, to be honest. Right now, you're already starting to brine. You could sit something in here right now if you just want a garlic flavor, ladies and gentlemen, and you already could sit something inside this garlic salt-infused water, ladies and gentlemen, and flavor it up, okay? But I had a few more ingredients I'd like to add to mine, okay? Right here, what I have is a little bit of adobo, ladies and gentlemen. Well known in the Spanish community, especially our, in the Spanish community, especially our Latin brothers and sisters, our Puerto Ricans and things like that. We love y'all, ladies and gentlemen, over here at Slide Life. But this is one of their favorite things to use is adobo. And I like to use it in my household, too. It's very good flavor. Good seasoning. Now, if you're talking about some good fried chicken, ladies and gentlemen, I call it so good, I call it adobo fried chicken, man. If you get you some chicken, ladies and gentlemen, or pollo, <laughs> hable espanol. But you get you some chicken, ladies and gentlemen, and season it with some of this right here with nothing else. No black pepper, no nothing. Just straight adobo. Put it in some flour and deep fry. Ladies and gentlemen, you will never ever in your life season your chicken with anything else. Not trust me on that. This right here is a um a all around seasoning, ladies and gentlemen. Some just like Laurie seasoning salt. It has everything already added in it. So it's all purpose, as you guys can see. And there goes a little bit of the ingredients that's in there. Garlic, onion, things of that nature. Okay. Now after every dry seasoning, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna give it a whoosh. As you guys can see, just to get those seasonings activated in that water, I need it all over in that water. You understand what I'm saying? Now, as you guys can see, we already starting to get a little color to our water. 
Next thing. This is a must, what I'm finna bring to you guys' attention next. When you are making a brine, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care if it's for poultry or fish, you gonna need you some oranges in there. That is the number one additive. Oranges, ladies and gentlemen. And when it comes down to a turkey brine, ladies and gentlemen, I add apples in mine, and it's so good. Now, you don't want to peel this orange and nothing like that. What I simply do is I cut it in half, ladies and gentlemen, just like so. Now, you guys can notice with this dark orange on this hole right here, this is a California orange, and this is a Florida orange. You guys can see the difference. A California orange is orange, 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 and a Florida orange is more of a yellow orange, okay? So you guys know the difference. Now, what I like to do, ladies and gentlemen, I squeeze a little bit of the juice, and then I drop it right in that pot, just like that. Get a little bit of that juice infused in that water, drop it in the pot, just like that. Now let's cut this Florida orange in half. Sir, same thing I did with that California orange, ladies and gentlemen. Squeeze them a little bit. Drop them in that water, just like that. Stir it around. Okay. That's some, oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, I wish y'all could smell. Mama Slash, you smell that, baby girl? Mm -hmm. How that smell? It's like a sweet, citrusy garlic smell, right? Mm -hmm. It smells absolutely amazing, ladies and gentlemen. I would not lie to y'all. Right now, you already got enough to for brine right now. But like I said, I got a couple of more ingredients. But Lord have mercy, that smells good. Seriously. Okay, my oven's done preheating. I just heard it go beep, beep, beep. <clears throat> now, what I have right here, ladies and gentlemen, is one of my wife's favorites when she comes down to making our holiday hams and things like that right there. She loves putting cloves in her ham. And it's absolutely delicious. It's even more delicious than your brine, ladies and gentlemen. You get a little bit of that clove flavor. Ooh, I wish y'all could smell that smell of vision. I'm going to take a little bit of these cloves because cloves has a very strong flavor, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to put a little handful of those cloves in there just like that. Now, what I told y'all, every time you incorporate anything, give it a little stir, ladies and gentlemen, get them flavors activating all through that water. Ooh, that just added an extra fragrance to it, too. Now, this is one of my secrets right here, ladies and gentlemen. I don't need y'all to go tell on me, you know, y'all go tell nobody else this. But y'all go get y'all some grandma's molasses, ladies and gentlemen, 100% molasses. Now, now that fake stuff, now go get y'all some of this right here. I also use this right here for plant feeding. I, I, am, I do got a little green thumb, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to bring y'all guys in my gardening world here this spring. Don't worry about it. But um, I got a little gardening green thumb, and this is what I like to feed my plants, ladies and gentlemen. They absolutely love the molasses water mixture. I, ooh, ooh. But we're going to take a little bit of this, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit of molasses. Oof, that's a strong flavor. And we're going to pour a little bit in there, ladies and gentlemen, just like that. Now, after you are done pouring that molasses. Now, remember what I told you guys? Your brine can only do one or two things for you, ladies and gentlemen. And that season it or give you what? Coloration, ladies and gentlemen. I know you guys look in this uh, pot right here as I done stirred that molasses in there a couple times. Y'all see that color of that water? That will give you a beautiful beautiful gorgeous color ladies and gentlemen when you are smoking that fish that molasses get on there and it sticks in there ladies and gentlemen it will give you a beautiful caramel brown oh my my but y'all gonna see okay we're done with our grandma's molasses <clears throat> what i have over here ladies and gentlemen just some celery i'm gonna cut the heads off of it okay peel it and I'm going to drop it in the hole, ladies and gentlemen, just like that. We'll get us a couple stalks of celery in there. Yes, sir. The number one seasoning in the world, other than that onion and garlic. We'll get our celery in there, ladies and gentlemen. What I told y'all, after every incorporation, man, get a stir. Let's get a stir. Okay. Y'all following me? Now. Next. <clears throat> Crush chili peppers, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to give it ooh, a nice little kick, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want much of this. Professor, no, he don't like no kick. I hate the kick. <laughs> hey, I ain't going to lie to y'all. Your mama Slaz ain't told y'all no lies just there. Professor Slaz do not like the spicy food too heavy. 
So y'all know by me adding this right here, got to give some real good flavor to that bride for me to incorporate that shit in my bride. Oh no. Yeah. Me and my neighbor were just laughing about that the other day, man. Me and my neighbor Eric, I told him, I said, yeah, my taste buds ain't nothing but a bunch of cowards. <laughs> They can't take the heat, and they love to stay out the kitchen. <laughs> they just love flavor and seasoning. I don't see how... Y'all put in the comment section if y'all like spicy food, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not knocking y'all. I love y'all. Hey, hey, hey. This is what it is. Don't beat me up now. I'm just saying, I can't take it. I'm a wimp when it comes to spicy food. I just like a little kick. That's it. But, um... Y'all let me know, man. Y'all like that spicy food, man. But I don't see how y'all can enjoy it. Y'all let me know if you can sit down and enjoy your food while it's burning your mind. Hey, more power to you. I can't. As long as my nose ain't running, it's good. Mm. And my nose runs. I don't need dogs. Every time. All Listen, that. I'm so weak, ladies and gentlemen. Louisiana hot sauce make my nose run. Mm. Slide like baby. I'm going to continue to put it on my fish, though. My now, to stick to the fish. What we have here right now, ladies and gentlemen, is some pepper pesto. With a little bit of ricotta cheese in it. And it also has a little bit of bell peppers. All kind of different peppers, ladies and gentlemen, except for the spicy ones. Get us a generous amount of that right on in there. I'm gonna get two of those because that one ain't got no kick. <laughs> oh. Okay, after every incorporation, ladies and gentlemen, I told y'all stir. Now, brown sugar, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, I just told you guys, brown on the dust, one of two things, flavor, color. This is another one of your color incorporations right here. You don't need much. That's enough to keep. So I'm going to actually use the rest of that. Inside. They have real corporation stir. Man, that smells so good. Ooh, y'all wish y'all could smell this brine right now, ladies and gentlemen. Mama Slides, you give it to people. Tell them, tell them exactly what that smell like to you, ladies. Oh, baby girl. Seasonings. Mmm. But see, it's kicking different than me. I can smell the pepper. I smell that orange still kicking through there, ladies and gentlemen. I smell the clove a little bit. I smell the clove a little bit. It's actually incorporating and blending in very good. Right now, this pot is having a holy matrimony. Match made in heaven. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we on next. <clears throat> right here, what we have, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit of soy sauce. What I told you guys, the beginning of every good brine is your salt. Remember that. So we're going to take a little bit of soy sauce, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to go across that thing with a little soy sauce, just like that. Not much. Or you need a little bit, because you want that salt enough. So you're going to rinse your fish off after it sits in here anyway, so it ain't going to be salty, trust me. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys know, y'all put in the comment section and let me know if I'm correct or not. You guys know what I'm talking about. If you guys know what I'm talking about, put in the comment section. There's people out there, ladies and gentlemen, that cook with nothing but salt. There's ways that you can just cover your whole fish with nothing but salt, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking about a thick block of salt. And you can cook it like that, ladies and gentlemen. You can cook your food under salt. Literally, I'm not joking. I'm serious. Y'all go look it up, man. You could take fish, ladies and gentlemen, cover it in salt completely where you don't even see the fish anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Sit it in the oven or around a fire or something, and you could cook the fish. And then when you get done, they got to break the salt. The, the salt being turned black and being got hard, I mean, they break that salt open, ladies and gentlemen, and peel that fish out of the oven. Man, it looks delicious. I never tried it, but it looks delicious. Y'all YouTube that, man. Y'all think I'm playing? What I have right here, ladies and gentlemen, is whole oregano. Now, this is going to be one of those flavor inducers right here, ladies and gentlemen. When you put that oregano in there, it's just going to give it a nice little kick of, of herbal flavor and smell. Now, this brine will be used twice. Y'all let me elaborate. No, no more meat will not get sodded in this, but I will use this same liquid right here, ladies and gentlemen, to douse my smoker fire the day of smoking the mullet. I will use the liquids in here to douse the fire. Like if the flame was to kick back up, I use this, get me a spoonful of it, boom, hit it around that fire, on that uh, fire, and it kicks a very good smell 
on that uh on your oak or whatever you smoking with pecan orange i've heard about a lot of different things that people like to smoke with but my favorite is oak ladies and gentlemen i'm more of the bold flavor not so much the sweet tone i like more of the bold if i'm eating some smoked food ladies and gentlemen i want it to be smoked i want to have that straight smoke flavor you get what i'm saying and i don't see nothing out there beating that oak tree you understand me what y'all put in the comment section down below, ladies and gentlemen, what you guys smoke with. You guys let me know the, the type of wood you guys like to use, huh? Because there's numerous out there. Now, what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is old yellow bell pepper. We ain't doing nothing fancy-pancy with it, ladies and gentlemen. We gonna cut that head off like this, huh? Grab them seeds. Y'all, excuse me, I'm gonna go rush her off real quick. I'll be right back with y'all. Always wash your vegetables, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm going to simply just take them and slice them right down the middle like that right there, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I got two whole halves in there, just like that. Stir again. Okay. We almost done, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> right here, what I have is a little bit of Caribbean fish season, ladies and gentlemen. I use this right here when I make my fish head soup. <clears throat> Guys, put in the comment section if you guys ever had fish head soup. And put in the comment section if you guys want me to film that video one day and show you guys how I make my fish head soup. And it's absolutely delicious. And my line, Mama Slap. Mm -mm. Whoa. Man, you clean that head off real good. Clean it out real good, man. And boil it down, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Over some rice, man. But anyway, I got some Caribbean fish seasoning right here, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to go in there with that. Now, all my other brines have these same flavors in it except for this. Only time I use this, ladies and gentlemen, is when I'm using my brine for fish. Look at the color of this brine now, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all see all them flavors in there incorporating? Look at that color. Look at that. I'm going to spoon a little bit. Y'all don't see nothing but seasonings and herbs and stuff in there, man. That's going on your fish, man. And it's going to soak inside the bones of the fish. <clears throat> what I have here, ladies and gentlemen, is a bag of garlic. Uh, Mama Slabs likes to go to Sam's Club, and she buys the biggest bag of garlic you ever want to see in your life. And we use the whole cloves, as you guys can see. I'm going to put my five in there, and I'm going to stir it up. Five whole cloves of garlic. Now, what I have right here are some cold cocktail onions, ladies and gentlemen. You understand me? Whole cocktail onions. What I'm gonna do with that is, first of all, I'm gonna get a little bit of that juice in there because that's a very good flavor by itself. Ooh, them onions stinking! I'm gonna get a couple of them there. A couple more here. Three more there. Onion is my favorite uh, uh, flavor enhancer in the world. Flo uh, onion, ladies and gentlemen, I love onion. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I love, love, love me some onion. We're going to mix that up a little bit, get that onion flavor in there, incorporate it with some oranges, that bell pepper, that celery, and that fish seasoning, and that molasses. And, whoa, whoa, ladies and gentlemen. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, you guys put in the comment section how you pronounce it, whether it's Worcestershire sauce, or Worcestershire sauce, or Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> I've heard it all kind of way, but we got some Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce right here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> They gonna throw us a little Worcestershire sauce in there, ladies and gentlemen. And nope, the missus is not gonna try to pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna mix that Worcestershire sauce in there just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here goes a little bit of learning process. What's the science behind a brine? What is your meat doing in the brine? While sitting in the brine, what is your meat doing? I'm gonna show you guys exactly what it's doing. So I put them in there first. You guys remember the color of that orange? That's why I showed you guys on the camera. Only five minutes of sitting inside this brine, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still mixing stuff together. Look. Uh oh. Look at that. That is five minutes in that brine. Look at that. Now, nah, let's turn it around. Look at that. See all them herbs and stuff all on top of that skin of that orange? Let's do this one more time. Look at that. It'll turn the whole orange the color of the brine. That's what your meat is doing inside that brine, ladies and gentlemen. It's literally taking a bath and it is soaking 
up those good flavors. But I'm gonna tell y'all something. The brine is not done yet. I got one more thing and I almost forgot it too, ladies and gentlemen. That would have been a bad, bad, bad mess up for me. I got one more secret ingredient I like to add in here, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all excuse me. Beer. Budweiser to be exact. That's my choice of beer, ladies and gentlemen. I love me a good old cold Budweiser on a Saturday while I'm sitting next to the lake watching some barbers on a Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, after church or something like that right there. We sit down and watch some football, ladies and gentlemen. Ain't nothing like a cold beer. Matter of fact, hey, on Mondays too, ladies and gentlemen, after a start of a good old work week, ladies and gentlemen, get off of work and sit on your old porch and drink your cold beer, ladies and gentlemen. Ain't nothing like it, man. That's the American dream. To each his own if you don't drink. Hey man, if you do, cheers to you. But Budweiser is my brand, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm gonna dump that whole thing of Budweiser right in there. In that bomb blind. In that brine. Just like that. And I'm gonna stir. Now, you guys can Google what I'm finna tell you. The beer in the brine is what locks in the moisture. The malt inside the beer activates all these flavors, ladies and gentlemen, and will block in moisture inside your meat so when i go out there and smoke that meat it's gonna be dry in zero places it's gonna be moisture all through that meat ladies and gentlemen you understand what i'm saying but this is the most important part of the brine right here what i'm getting ready to do huh i'm getting ready to get this pot on the stove ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna break it to a boil understand what i'm saying we're going to get this on the stove. We're going to bring this to a boil, ladies and gentlemen. And as soon as it starts boiling, we're going to cut it off. We're going to chill it. And we're going to get our fish in it. And we're going to get it in the refrigerator and let it sit for 24 hours, ladies and gentlemen. So right now, what I want you guys to do is stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and get our brine on the stove. Get it boiling. And I'll be right back with y'all. Love y'all. Slow like baby. Girl, smoke fish brine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you guys can see, we have a beautiful rolling boil right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the heat off completely. Okay. I'm going to let this sit and cool for maybe an hour or two. Some people <clears throat> will take a bag of ice and they dump in there to automatically just get it to a rush chill. But I don't do that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to let my brine rest. I'm going to take it off the eye, okay? I'm going to sit it on top of a towel on my table, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to just let it rest naturally. Understand what I'm saying? When we get this uh, brine to room temperature, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be right back with y'all, and we're going to be adding our fish, and I'm going to show you guys what to do on the next step. Slap life, baby! Y'all ain't know Professor Slides was a psychiatrist, too. Yeah. Cause I got all this aromatherapy going on in the house right now. Look at all that aromatherapy coming up out of that pot. Look at that. Y'all see it, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. Right now, Mama Slab's going through some aromatherapy. Slab like baby. <laughs> oh, just aside, though, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you guys. As you guys see, I got my pot sitting here. And it is cooling, and I like to cool mine down, room temperature, low and slow. So I'm going to say probably about two, three hours sitting right here, ladies and gentlemen. We got our fish in the ice box still. And next step is getting that together, and I'm going to show you guys what to do afterwards. But what I want to talk to you guys about is, why do you boil the brine? I'm pretty sure a couple of you guys out there have that question. I'm going to answer it for you right now. When you boil... Those seasonings, those herbs, those juices, those fruits and everything that you mixed up in there, ladies and gentlemen, you are activating those flavors in the most magnificent way ever. You understand what I'm saying? By heat. As you guys can see all this smoke coming off right now, ladies and gentlemen, that ain't nothing but flavor. I'm talking about that's why it has a smell. You get what I'm saying? So, 
Just like if you was to season the steak and put him on a hot pan and eat it and you could taste that good flavor because the heat activated those seasonings, ladies and gentlemen. When you rub something or you brine something, ladies and gentlemen, as soon as heat hits it, activation. I'm going to tell you guys another activation, ladies and gentlemen, when it cools. The cooling period, ladies and gentlemen, is bringing all those flavors together and ironing them all down together, especially after I do what I'm getting ready to do. Which is stir it. You know what I'm saying? Then let it go ahead and chill. But yes, man. This is your flavors right here, ladies and gentlemen. The better your broth is, the better your smoked fish is going to come out. You understand? Or whatever that you're brining. Your your poultry. Whatever. You, you get what I'm saying? Now. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is. I'm going to stir it up. I'm going to let it sit for two to three hours. Okay, and we'll be back, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. Slap like baby. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Slav's back. It has been three hours, ladies and gentlemen. We have let our brine, we have let our brine <laughs> cool off. And we're getting ready to um, get our fish over here, our mother that we cleaned yesterday, submerged in it, okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, we need for you guys to send us some special prayers. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just heard on the news we are right now in a Tornado warning right now has just been issued out for Manatee County where I'm at, ladies and gentlemen. We have a, a pop-up little storm that came through. It's very windy outside right now, but we still finna get this content. We got the kids home today, stay we ain't let them go to school and that, of course. And um, yeah, man, so if you guys are in Florida with us, we pray for you and your family also. You guys stay safe, man. Stay put up, you and the kids and family. But let's get on with this video. Um, so we got our brine right here, ladies and gentlemen. We got it cooled off. And look at that. Beautiful. The bell peppers don't even turn the color. They done got the boiling up real good. That done activated them celery flavors and everything. So y'all already know how we coming, ladies and gentlemen. So what I have right here is a clean pan. Okay. You want your pan big enough to be able to put your two fishes in there or however many fish that you're going to be able to have, that you're going to have for your family gathering or for your household. Just make sure that you have a container big enough to not only put your meat in it, but enough to submerge your meat in the brine, okay? Just like when I do a turkey, ladies and gentlemen, I have a big old container. I have to sit the turkey in to make sure that I can be able to fill it up with brine too, where I can see you have to keep it fully submerged, okay? Only thing that's gonna be hanging out maybe is just a tail. And we ain't eating our tails on a, on, a, on a smoker like that right there. It ain't like it's gonna be a fried tail. You get what I'm saying? So, so you're gonna grab your, your butterflies, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna get them laid up and done nice. Yes, indeed. We're gonna get that mother laid in there just like that, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're gonna do. Matter of fact, what I'm, I'm gonna take one out. I'm going to do a little pouring on top of this one first. And then, I'm going to put it up. So you just want to take your brine, ladies and gentlemen, and just pour it. And that's it. Just like that. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Now, look at all the seasonings and herbs floating all around in there on it. Now, look, I'm going to just lift him for a second. And look at that already. You see that, ladies and gentlemen? All them herbs and stuff. Oh, man. You just wait till it comes to smoking day. Ooh, boy, it smells good, too. It smells like a good soup or something, man. I might want to drink. Okay, now we got that other butterfly in there. Look how beautiful and clean that meat is, man. Look at that, man. We're going to finish submerging there. 
Just enough. Not all the way. Just enough. Well, she can be fully submerged in those liquids. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, what we have here is a failure to communicate. That's going to be delicious when it comes smoking day, ladies and gentlemen. You better believe that. Now, this is what I like to do. All them vegetables and the oranges and stuff like that. There, ladies and gentlemen, I like to put that right in there on top. Oh, that fish. Now, y'all notice I ain't put no lemons in here, right? And there's a reason why, ladies and gentlemen. Lemon is going to cook that uh, fish a little bit. You don't want it cooked. You don't want that much acidic in there, that much acid in there. Okay? Get that garlic in there for sure. You see them little, them little bitty onions? Look at them little bitty onions. Ooh. Them little bitty onions. My neighbor gave us those onions right there, ladies and gentlemen, little bitty, bitty onions, and it came right on time for me to make this here brine. Yes, sir. Little bitty onions. All them oranges, that celery, bell peppers, man, garlic, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Shut sh 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 your mouth in there. Ha <laughs> Whatever y'all want to call it. Wish a shire, wish sh shut your mouth. It's what I call it, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, man. That's it, duh. So, here goes the next process, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this beautiful meat. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that meat. Look at that meat. Oh, man, ain't that gorgeous. Ain't that gorgeous, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Oh, man, 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 man. Listen, now what you want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is you want to get this in the refrigerator, the ice box, whatever you guys call it, and you want to let that chill for 24 hours, ladies and gentlemen. 24 hours. Now, I'm going to let you guys know, we got a little stormy weather going through us right now, ladies and gentlemen, so... Mine going to sit for the 24. And if I'm able to go out there and smoke it for you guys, I'm going to do just that. But if not, I'm still going to preserve it. I'm going to just take it out the brine like I normally would do. Rinse it off and get it nice and ready. And I'm going to just let it wait until I'm able to go and show you guys how she come off that smoker so beautifully. And I'm going to show you guys why I left them scales off, ladies and gentlemen. You just watch and stay tuned. Yes, sir. I love y'all, man. This is going to be a little short and sweet video. Just a little helpful something that I learned over the years over this good fish. You know what I'm saying? You know, all my content going to try to be 98% of the time going to be fish related, ladies and gentlemen. You already know that. So, thank you guys for coming through. And for all my people that never know nothing about a brine, hopefully you guys learned something. And all, from my, all my people that has used the brine, get in the comment section, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know how you make your brine. What you put in your seasonings. What you do different. What you do the same. Huh? Let me know what you like to brine. You understand? But let me know if you even use a brine. Let me know if you ever even heard of it before. You understand what I'm saying? Ladies and gentlemen, talk to me. And while you're talking to me, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you have not already. And hit that little bell right next to it, ladies and gentlemen, to stay notified. And if you learned something and you earned something, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and hit that thumb over there. You understand me? I love y'all, man. And if you don't remember anything... I want you to remember this, but hold up, wait a minute, let me put some smile life in it. This little bit right here that I have left over, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, is going to be four, two things. The first thing is going to be to douse my fire with, like I told you guys earlier, where it gets that same aromas, and I ain't want to already have the fish flesh in it, because that would be a little cross-contamination, or whatever you guys want to call it, cross-contamination, ladies and gentlemen, stop playing with y'all. But you don't want no cross-contamination, man, so that's why I left me a little liquid and took all the vegetables and stuff out, because I ain't going to want that on the fire. I'm going to just be dousing the fire with this liquid. 
You understand me? And the second thing I'm going to be doing with this right here is I'm going to have me a little bitty pan up under these smoking butterflies right here on the smoker, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I told you guys earlier, that aromatherapy, ladies and gentlemen, that smoke. Smoke is steam, and steam is hot. You know what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen? And with these activating, with that steam, what I told you guys, with that activation from the heat, it's going to activate that steam. And guess what? It's going to continue the season. This fish with the same exact flavors that it done sat in the brine for 24 hours, ladies and gentlemen. Man, y'all hit a thumbs up for me out there, ladies and gentlemen. I love y'all. And I ain't forget. Don't you ever forget. I ain't forget, so don't you forget. If you have to ask, you are not living. And if you're not living, you're not fishing. Slide like baby. It's a lifestyle that I present and bring a lifetime of memories. And you can take that to the bank. Or the duck. Just make sure you got a pole in hand, ladies and gentlemen. Love y'all. God bless y'all. And to the next time, the professor is checking that. Slide like baby. Get you seeing the refrigerator. The refrigerator. If you are early in the morning and watch the sunrise on the lake, even if none's in your bucket, the beer scenery will fill the space. When the barber goes down with tugging, this thrill compares to nothing. Yeah, this that life for loving, cause you're dealing with some fishermen.